Rise, Meg. The Force will be with you. Utini! Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. In today's video we're going to be talking about how Lucasfilm is afraid of losing Pedro Pascal. We're also going to be talking about the Book of Boba Fett and more. As always my dear Megalorians, before I dive into it please may I ask you to hit like down below, subscribe to the channel if you're new and a huge welcome if you are and also be sure to hit that bell to be alerted each and every time that I post new content to the channel. So without much further ado and without any more jibber jabber, let's dive straight into it. We're going to be talking about Pedro Pascal but first of all let's speak about Cobb Vanth. Screen Rant have written a really good article explaining why he should return in the Book of Boba instead of the Mandalorian. If heroic Tatooine Marshal Cobb Vanth is going to return to Star Wars, it would be far better for him to appear in the Book of Boba Fett instead of The Mandalorian Season 3. As we saw in Chapter 9, before Din Djarin took Boba's armour, Cobb Vanth used it to great effect, particularly in his role as Marshal of Mos Pelgo. Cobb Vanth's indirect connection to Boba through his armour, his interactions with the criminal underworld and his residence on Tatooine make the Book of Boba Fett the ideal series for him to return in. With The Mandalorian's third season set to focus on Bo-Katan's rivalry with Din Djarin in order to get the Darksaber, the Book of Boba Fett should include Cobb Vanth and could do so in many ways. While Mos Pelgo may not be close to Boba Fett's new headquarters, the spread of Fett's criminal empire throughout Tatooine would inevitably get Vant's attention. Cobb Vant could easily become an adversary of Boba and Fennec Shand, given his status as a marshal and theirs as crime lords. But we should also consider the possibility that they might end up as allies. Boba and Fennec are shown to be honourable criminals in The Mandalorian Season 2. And Marshal Vanth might see working alongside them as a necessary evil if they protect ordinary citizens from vicious gangs. If I'm being completely honest guys, I don't think it's a coincidence that Cobb Vance showed up in the same episode as Boba's first appearance in The Mandalorian right at the end of Chapter 9. In my opinion, that was Favreau and Filoni's way of setting up the return of Cobb Vanth for a future show. In this case, it's going to be the Book of Boba Fett. I very much doubt we're going to see him in The Mandalorian Season 3. I could be wrong, but I think because the Book of Boba focuses on Tatooine, it's almost inevitable that Cobb Vanth is going to show up. Timothy Oliphant has not confirmed anything at this point, but we will see what happens. But let me know your thoughts on this. Do you think we're going to see Cobb Vanth in the Book of Boba or The Mandalorian Season 3? And a further question, did you enjoy his character when we saw him in The Mandalorian? Or if you first discovered him in Aftermath? So with that in mind, let's move on to our next article. Lucasfilm are reportedly worried about Pedro Pascal leaving the show. Pedro Pascal's increased fame and fortune is causing Lucasfilm to worry about whether they can keep him on board or not. Daniel Richman has shared on his Patreon page that the studio is looking to lock down the actor for an unstated amount of future seasons of The Mandalorian. They're doing this because apparently they're scared that they might lose him if The Last of Us takes off for HBO. While I don't 100% trust the legitimacy of this article and the claim that they're making, it does seem very compliant with a symptom of what's going on at Lucasfilm to do with The Mandalorian and everything else right now. Bear in mind that the visual guide for Mando as well as the novel has been cancelled. And while there's been a lot of business talk excuses as to why this is, a lot of fans are worrying that The Mandalorian Season 3 could be cancelled. In essence, they might just go with the spin-off shows and end the main one entirely. Now we all know where this started, it all started with the firing of Gina Carano, but there are a lot of things behind the scenes that as fans we don't get to see and hear. I would like to believe that the Mandalorian is not in trouble, but we just have to wait and see what announcements come. Seeing everything that's going on right now, I can't help but feel that when marketing begins for the Mandalorian Season 3, the hype just isn't going to be half as great as it was for Season 2. Of course, this might affect viewership and the perception of the show on the whole. I hate to say it and I do like to stay positive on this channel, but I guess we'll just see what happens. And now my dear friends, we're going to return to the Book of Boba. 10 ways it can avoid similarities with the Mandalorian. Evidently the Book of Boba is an offshoot of the Mandalorian, but it does need to stand out as its own show even if it does tie into the Mandoverse. So here are the 10 ways it can do that. Number one is more on the anti side of anti-hero. Both Din Djarin and Boba are anti-heroes, but Mando is more overtly heroic than Boba is. He's been the traditionally defined good guy ever since he rescued Grogu from the client. On the other hand, we have to bear in mind that Boba was introduced as a villain in The Empire Strikes Back. With much less heroism in his characterization, Boba's adventures in the Book of Boba Fett will be able to explore the anti-side of being an anti-hero much more than The Mandalorian has. Next up, he has to show his age. 
When Koska Reeves made a crack about Boba Fett being Mando's sidekick, he engaged her in a bar brawl. Boba surprisingly showed his age in this fight, moving slower than we're used to seeing him and taking more hits than he gave out. If the fight hadn't been broken up by Bo-Katan, he probably would have lost. But don't get it wrong because Tomara Morrison is very physically fit and as we saw in a behind the scenes shoot, he is more than ready for an action packed series. Mando is in the prime of fighting in The Mandalorian, so his fight scenes are zippy and fast paced. The book of Boba Fett needs to show a tactful Boba as well as showing his age as well. The next one that this article proposes is to have no ties to Force users. Although The Mandalorian was initially set up as a show about a bounty hunter, Grogu being a Force user eventually brought the story back to the Skywalkers. The additions of Ahsoka and Luke Skywalker added to this. After meeting Grogu, Din Djarin started searching the galaxy for any surviving Jedi. The Book of Boba Fett can differentiate itself with a story that doesn't involve Force users. Next up, we have less commitment to the Mandalorian creeds. We now know that Jango Fett was a Mandalorian, but whether or not the Fetts were true Mandos has flip-flopped a couple of times in canon. But of course, in Disney's canon, not only are the Fett's real Mandos, Jango was a foundling just like Mando himself. However, despite being a Mandalorian, Boba isn't as committed to creeds as Din is. So the book of Boba Fett doesn't need to be as concerned with Mandalorian religious beliefs. Next up, we have the fact that the show needs to deal with fellow bounty hunters. We know that some of the original bounty hunters from The Empire Strikes Back are going to return, or at least the ones who are alive. But the show needs to really include them in the right way and make the entire series feel as if it's really true to the original trilogy. The article then argues that the Book of Boba needs to be true to spaghetti western homages. Ever since George Lucas borrowed heavily from Akira Kurosawa, the Star Wars franchise has worn its cinematic influences on its sleeve. The Mandalorian has been heavily inspired by revisionist westerns, but to differentiate it from Mando, the Book of Boba can take inspiration from Italian spaghetti westerns, which also deconstructed the myths of the West, but with an even bleaker outlook and even more brutal violence. The next one is the Imperial Remnants. While the Mandalorian did touch upon Moff Gideon and the Imperials that are left in the galaxy, the Book of Boba can explore it more broadly. Next up, we have Ming-Na Wen's Fennec Shand. She's going to be in the Bad Batch, but she also appears more prominently in live action form in the Book of Boba. After he saved her, she owes him her everlasting allegiance. The show needs to build on that dynamic and be different to Mando and Cara Dunes. The next one is a different backstory. We talked about Daniel Logan, but they do need to show more of earlier Boba Boba's life, maybe not as early as Attack of the Clones, but certainly how he escaped the Sarlacc pit. We didn't get enough backstory to Din Djarin, but maybe we get more backstory to Boba in this series. And finally, it's going to be a different sort of show because it's going to be revenge driven. If the palace takeover scene in the Mandalorian season 2's finale is anything to go by, the book of Boba Fett will be driven by Boba's efforts to exact revenge against everybody who wronged him. Revenge is a classic theme in these kind of western stories and the book of Boba needs to deliver that. I'm so excited for the show and I have full faith that it will deliver something spectacular. But what do you guys think? What do you think of today's news update? Smash a like below if you enjoyed it. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments and I will see you next time. I'm Star Wars Meg wishing you all a phenomenal rest of the day, no matter where you dwell in the galaxy. Have a good one.